Something that's made the past year way easier, being a longtime user of HelloFresh. It's America's number one meal kit for a reason. And now is the best time to find out why. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers12 and use the code footballers12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The big bear, the cardboard bear extraordinaire, he's here. Yep, Jay Grizz in the house, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. No Jason, no round mound of redraft available. So every time the bear is here, uh, Brooks and company, they set up a, a, a nice station for him. Yes. He uh, he is an unabashed Chicago Bears homer. Yes. For obvious reasons. Uh, he also has this book that is <laughs> it is always out by his desk about salmon. And I just looked at the cover for- What's the actually, name of the book? It's called The Salmon Way. Okay. Uh, and this is the first time I've really looked at the cover. Yeah. But it is a it is a bear chomping uh on a on a salmon. Right. And it is it is grotesque. There's like, eggs coming out of it. Like Yes. That's there's, not there's eggs coming out, so this bear has just killed a mama fish. And the and the fish is uh man, nature is rough. Yeah. It's, 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 well, it's, like it's, it's, it's tough in the streams. I hate to- <laughs> it's tough in the streams. <laughs> Well, that is the salmon way. That is the salmon yeah. way, Mike. Okay, well, I hope we just boosted the sales for the salmon way. And Jay Grizz, is, he's leaning a little your direction. Do you notice that? Well, he likes to look at me. <laughs> His eyes are on you. Uh, don't worry, everyone out there. No Jason today, but Mike and I have another rookie show to bring your way. Yeah. We've got wide receivers on today's show. Mike is rubbing his hands together with anticipation. And to stay warm. Okay, is it cold in here? No. I forget you sit right in the path of the, uh, the it comes air conditioner. And it goes. It's getting hot out here in Arizona, so we have to cool it down. Uh, we've got tight ends as well on today's show. Maybe some mailbag. Got some buy-sell we're going to get into. Uh, a couple bits of news at the top. Uh, I know, Mike, you're super excited about this. Mm-hmm. Get your dynasty pants on, people. Uh, <laughs> we're... That's right. We're still rolling with it. We're still rolling. It, it's a two-show thing, it's DynastyPants.com. <laughs> uh, and then the UDK Plus, <laughs> We the second of three major releases of the Dynasty Pass just uh, was just dropped mm-hmm. on uh, DynastyPants.com. <laughs> yes, that is correct. And this this is all of the Dynasty Pass content has been updated, and then we also have added Fantasy Hitman's Trade Targets. That's right. So we've got some dynasty trade aways, trade four candidates, mm-hmm. and we have the rookie risers and fallers that we just uh, worked in there as well. A new rookie mock draft. So if you play dynasty and you don't have the ultimate draft kit yet, head to ultimatedraftkit.com, get the UDK plus, and check those updates out. If you already have it, check it out as well because it's all brand new. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow us over there, the fantasyfootballers.com is the website. YouTube.com/slash the fantasy footballers. Uh, be where, be warned. The salmon way was on display today on the show. So yeah, I'm not sure we'll be able to monetize this content on YouTube. Well, we we Amy, it's a vicious bite. We helped uh, Amy out here with the salmon way. <laughs> Is that who wrote it? Uh, yes. Uh, wait, what's the full name? Let's give the shout out here uh, for the salmon way. Amy Golick. And what's the subtitle of the book? There, an Alaskan state of mind. State of mind. <laughs> this this is a fish show now. <laughs> this is a fish show. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> stuff in the streams, like you said. <laughs> Let's get into the buy sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Oh my goodness! I, I this is a great buy sell topic because we have our early running oh, back man. rankings episode next week, and we're going to talk about David Montgomery. Buy or sell whether he will be a value in 2021 drafts. Let me just remind you, Mike, and the folks out there. He finished as the running back four 
last year in 15 games played. Wait, what? Yes. The running no. back four. So he is he was a top five running back last year. I don't remember it that way. And when you look at how people are drafting David Montgomery right now, he is going at or outside the top twenty in a lot of drafts. Now, there were uh, I don't know if you looked at this. I'll ask you the question. If you cheated, let me know. But can you think of another player to finish top five and be drafted outside the top twenty the following year? Because that doesn't happen very often. There's only two other names that have ever done that. I cannot think of them. D'Angelo Williams. Okay. Is but that, a, that uh, was when he was the running back five for Pittsburgh. Well, Pittsburgh, yeah. And Lev Bell came back, so you had a reason why. Yeah. And then Danny Woodhead. Oh, man. And it was when Melvin Gordon came into year two. Oh, those Danny Woodhead years were great. Yeah, you've always kind of – Danny Woodhead, Austin Eckler, you've always kind of connected with those guys. Yeah, the guys that, that no one wants on their team, but they're just Justin awesome Forsett. For, for fantasy. It's yeah. like, yes. But this is uh, – for whatever reason, David Montgomery – Oh, there's a reason. Okay, explain the reason why you can go from RB5, RB4 to outside the top 20. The reason is – so weeks one through nine, he scored two total touchdowns. And then weeks 12 through 17, he had eight touchdowns throughout that time. He was he was an, a league-winning type of player. The The schedule lined up perfectly for him. Tariq Cohen had uh, torn his ACL back in week four uh, or so, I believe is when that happened. Uh, so it, it was just a full George Clooney, Marky Mark, perfect storm for David Montgomery, and he, to his credit, he came through. I, we see plenty of times where the schedule is lined up for somebody and they fall flat on their face, uh, but now you have a few years, right, of, of David Montgomery and David Montgomery hype and hope of, of him in Matt Nagy's system being the main running back for Chicago, and the vast majority of it, you have been very disappointed in what David Montgomery has brought to the table. So are you do you just take those those uh those six games there at the end of the year and you say that's who he's going to be from now on despite Tariq Cohen coming back and uh uh Damian Williams was signed to be the backup as well. Well there's a there there is a middle ground between RB4 and RB outside the top 20 at the running back position. And when you look at the fundamentals of a player like David Montgomery, you're talking about somebody who, you know, you said the vast majority it was his second season last year that I, he finished RB4. Sure. So it, I, I understand that game to game it wasn't as consistent because he had a run, but at the end of the year he ended as the RB4 in year two. This is not an aging player. This is not a player that could not do this in the future. I I, I know from looking at my early running back rankings, he's not in my top 10. So I'm not expecting it. I just you know buy or sell that he's a value. I guess I'll buy that he's a value because I don't think people want to draft him. Well, we, we don't, uh, and I will speak as the man of the people. We do not want to draft David Montgomery, but like here's some names that uh, that I, you'd have to choose between. Yeah, so you're going to be looking. And this is the David Montgomery uh, range here. You know, like Chris Carson, James Robinson, DeAndre Swift, Josh Jacobs. I get so that there's a, there's a name that we can have an actual conversation. Would you rather have Josh Jacobs, who now has a very high paid backup. I saw someone had tweeted out a uh, stat of there's like 13 running backs who currently all have 10 plus guaranteed uh, million dollars on their contracts and two of them are on on the Las Vegas Raiders. That's how generous they were uh, compared to the running back market. But would you rather have Josh Jacobs who you yourself have have kind of caped a little bit saying that the the fantasy community is overreacting to Kenyon Drake? Would you rather have him or David Montgomery? I think the right answer is supposed to be Montgomery. Okay. But and I, I say it, a, <laughs> I say sounds it, like a man who's picking Jacobs, it, though. I say it that way because I think I feel what the ADP is doing. I can feel that uh, flash-in-the-pan idea about Montgomery's season. I think Montgomery's the better pick there. I think Montgomery's a better pick than DeAndre Swift as well. Wow. Then Swift? I do. Okay. But – um. This is why fantasy is so nuanced, though. I mean, is this your RB one? Did you go? Uh, did you go with a wide receiver early? Did you go with a quarterback? Did you go with a tight end? 
Or is this your RB? Like David Montgomery is an RB2. Is outstanding. That's a great opportunity for him because you have an upside that does exist. I mean, he finished as the RB4. Yep. You have a better quarterback, I think. You you had a guy. <laughs> it's not like he put the run together at the beginning of the year the way like Josh Jacobs did last year and then fell apart. It was at the end of the year. They, they trusted him. They gave him the ball. Damian Williams doesn't worry me that much. I don't. I expect the workload to go down, but he was a very, very good player. So I'll buy that he's going to be a value. Mike? I won't. Okay. Well, we'll talk more about him next week in the early – well, maybe not next week. I will buy that he is what he is at that ADP. He's not going to be in our top 10 consensus. No, he will not. So so take that. Yeah. I mean, I, th those are always possible values. If you have been there before and you're going outside the top, you know, Maybe the Thursday show, the second RB show next week. We'll talk more about it. Maybe. Uh, that was Buy or Sell, brought to you by Pristine Auction, pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. Lots of amazing gear over at Pristine Auction, but make sure you get that $10. Mm -hmm. or, or you can just pay $10 more. Either way. Either I mean, way. That, you, yeah, of course you can. Uh, That's dumb. Here's a running. This is the only piece of news before we get into our rookies that I want to bring up. The Bengals have announced they released Giovanni Bernard. They the, the the word is that they had already asked him to take a pay cut, and he was saying no, and he asked for his release. And granted, the the team granted him his wish. He will go. He Giovanni Bernard will be signed. He'll go somewhere. Does he hang out with Duke Johnson and Tariq Cohen? Are they friends? Uh, maybe is Duke Johnson just going to end up on Cincinnati now? I mean, do those guys will. swap spots with each other and just fulfill that role of kind of aging pass down back? S somebody will be is, Giovanni Bernard will be signed by someone. I'm and, terrified it's going to be Arizona. And oh, oh, please don't do that. Uh, and the the Cincinnati Bengals will have to bring somebody else in. In my opinion, uh, you you can't move forward with Joe Mixon, Samaj P. Ryan as your your only depth. I know that Travion Williams is there and they tried to give him a little bit of run toward the end of the season, but I think the team has seen enough that they know they're going to have to bring somebody else in because of the just how frequently the running back goes down to injury. The knee-jerk reaction was like, oh, Joe Mixon time. Now that Gio's gone. I, that me? wasn't really my reaction. Like, oh, it, it wasn't. Well, I mean, Gio's never bothered me in the equation for Joe Mixon. He's taken plenty of snaps away. He has taken snaps. So is the injuries for Joe Mixon. And I think, um, like you said, there, there'll be somebody else getting snaps, maybe not as many as Gio. But, you know, Joe has to stay healthy, and he'll be a great running back for fantasy. He but could be. He has been. He he could be. He has So been. David Montgomery was, too. Yeah, last year, the <laughs> RB4. I don't. How can you insult me with okay, his track record? David Montgomery or Joe Mixon? Joe Mixon. Yeah. Joe but he, Joe Mixon wasn't the RB4. I know. Wasn't even a top five. He says Montgomery as well. Of course he does. All right. Uh, you ready for some more rookie talk? Yep. Let's do it. Hey, rookie. Welcome to the NFL. All right. Uh... We did the running backs. We did the quarterbacks on the Tuesday episode of the Fantasy Footballers podcast. And this is an overview. What we liked in our own scouting processes when we watched the film on these players. Uh, our fantasy thoughts. Obviously, these players will have teams very soon, the end of this month. And there will be new thoughts. And some really good destinations and some bad ones. And, you know, you don't have to go back very far to remember DK Metcalf and AJ Brown landing on teams that we were like, oh, that's not very good. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they kind of made it good. They made it better. So very excited to talk about. Yeah, AJ Brown did an incredible thing where he got rid of his starting quarterback. Yeah. And then the backup was actually really good. Yeah, Ryan Tannehill became a thing. <laughs> All right, wide receivers. Our consensus uh, number one right now, mm -hmm. Devonta Smith out of Alabama. Whether he's the first wide receiver on the off the NFL board, I think that we would probably both bet that he's not. Yeah, I think Jamar Chase will be drafted higher. Um, Devonta Smith, kind of the scouting report there, sure-handed, Heisman winning, playmaking, short area quickness, 
Marvin Harrison esque type of player. Uh, Jason has shared all of his notes with us. Oh, benevolent Jason gave us his notes, and we are going to share them with you. And he said he, his his main point is that Devonta Smith's the perfect wide receiver in every way, shape, and form outside of the giant red flag that I know you'll bring up, which is the BMI situation. He's he's listed at one. What he weigh in at one seventy one? I don't know that he actually weighed in. I think he told people six one one seventy one. And I tell people what I weigh too. <laughs> do you uh, do you go with one seventy? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I he jumps off yes on film as a, an elite special player. Nobody at the wide receiver position had won the Heisman Trophy in twenty nine years. That should tell you what you need to know about Devonta Smith. He's that good. He's been that good. Um, late breakout age, four year player in college. Jason's number one wide receiver prospect, currently my number one wide receiver prospect. Jason brought up Calvin Ridley having a bad combine, bad BMI, late breakout age. Do you remember those issues with Calvin Ridley? I, I do, but if Smith and Ridley were in the same draft class, people would not be talking about Ridley's smaller stature. because it, it Smith is an outlier in every... In every sense of the word, his play is incredible. His production profile is absolutely outrageous. He is so smooth. His He is the best route running wide receiver uh, in this draft. He has an absurd manipulation of his speed. He is a magician where he will just appear open and, and on on play after play after play. Like, how was is, how is Devontae Smith open uh, yet again? It's just because of his football IQ. 1,856 but, yards, 23 touchdowns last year. But he is he is a professional athlete that is over six feet tall and is like 170 pounds. It is, a, it is an absolute outlier. Uh, like I said, if physically, uh, his, his athletic ability, everything is just is wonky with, with Smith. But it's not going to stop me from believing in him. It's it's not going to stop an NFL team NFL team from drafting him in the first round. It's he is he's a first round lock. He's probably not the first wide receiver to go off the board, but it's that's not going to matter. He's going to be excellent. Kind of reminds me of the dilemma we had when um, Amari Cooper came off the board. Who went ahead of Amari Cooper? Kevin White? No, no Cooper was first, and then Kevin White was. Oh, they was, were just really they were both in the top ten, right? No, uh, Cooper was Cooper was a top ten pick for the Raiders. I think uh, White went to the Bears. Like, I don't actually, I don't remember. We can I we can I look, think he was we can look that up. But I, I I just look at those two players where Kevin White represented the athletic. Um, but White was was also very raw as a prospect. He was he was a freak athletically. Well, I guess when I'm looking at Smith and the volume and the tactician and the PPR and the you know always open factors that you're bringing up, and then you look at Jamar Chase. Uh, who we'll talk about now, like people are in awe of the athleticism of Jamar Chase. Yes. The size, the contested catchability, and he profiles as the kind of dominator, right? The, the wide receiver. Contested catch machine. H Julio Jones-esque type of player, um, big splash play guy. Uh, if you go back and watch film on Jamar Chase, it's just splash play after splash play. High pointing a catch, hard, difficult catches. Now we didn't see him at all last year. He opted out. Correct. He he had done enough on tape in 2019 with Joe Burrow to take a year off and still be the top wide receiver yeah, off the board. Which is yeah, that's outrageous that you can hold on to your draft stock. Thirty percent of his targets in that 2019 year were deep targets. So like, and he he dropped one of his catchable deep targets. He dropped one. He he is an outstanding wide receiver. He is he's a very different archetype than Smith. So it will be interesting to see which team values. Uh, you know, like, so Smith's more of of the route runner, separate, get open, and Jamar Chase is is a bully. He's well, like he remind he reminds me a bit of like Des Bryant, where it's he's not mostly beating you with separation, but she can, but he's beating you because he has the will and he has the strength and he has the athletic ability. Both he and Smith ended up in the 20 touchdown club. 
in their last collegiate season. Both ended up around 1,800 yards. But to, to highlight what you're saying, like Smith was a 117-catch guy. Chase was an 84-catch guy. Mm-hmm. Same amount of yardage, but that highlights kind of the difference in what they did. And that has a lot to do with scheme. It could have to do with quarterback. Yeah. But uh, just to kind of compare the two. Uh, now, Jason was uh, – he, he, I'm going to read his quote verbatim because – I want it attributed to Jason Moore. <laughs> he says, I'm happy I'm not here for this one because I don't love Jamar Chase. He's good. His production was good. He's overhyped. He isn't a great separator. He's not bad. He's not a generational guy to me. He might have even been the third best wide receiver on his own college team. And then he says he ducks and runs away from the show. <laughs> ah, this might be why Jason so is not on today's comes show. Out. He's ducking from his hot takes. And that would be, I guess, he's bringing up Justin Jefferson during 2019 and then Terrence Marshall Jr. Yeah. So we're going to talk about him too. But, um, you know, Chase passes the eye test for me. I think we saw enough from him compared to a guy like Kevin White where, oh, for you sure. know, Chase was um, a difference maker. Chase could end up as a top five pick. Yeah. He could end up where? Uh, Cincinnati at five? It's possible. All right, we'll pause for a split second and we'll make a Devontae Smith style break into thanking today's sponsor. That means we are wide open. Wide open. Wide open. And uh, we want to thank Vincero for supporting the show, partnering with them once again. And uh, we couldn't be more excited. Finding a watch that is stylish, bold, built to last, that can cost a pretty penny. And Vincero has been changing that. Exceptionally crafted watches without breaking the bank. The guys over on their team sent us some of their watches. We have been loving the way these timepieces look. I can tell you I got one on right now. You can see it. I like it. It's a timepiece. Yeah, isn't that a little more elegant? Yeah, like it, it has watches not uh, fancy and enough. And I, can, I could blind somebody in this you studio can. with the studio lights. I could I could hit you. Look, if we were on a deserted island. Oh, my gosh. I'm signal, getting off. Signaling the airplane, no problem. From my time piece. <laughs> Now's the perfect time to shop Vincero because right now is Vincero's spring upgrade sale. Exclusively for our listeners, they're offering early access to their spring upgrade sale. Remember, everything on site is on sale. No exclusions, including sunglasses, wallets, bracelets, watches. Go to VinceroCollective.com slash fantasy. No code required. You don't even have to remember a code. Your discount will be automatically applied at checkout if you go to VinceroCollective.com slash fantasy. This is a buy you won't regret. And Foot Clan, if you have 30 free minutes, you never have to worry about a break-in at home ever again. That is how quick and easy it is to set up a security system with Simply Safe. It's the kind of thing that is so easy you can do it during a Netflix binge, watching a game, listening to this incredible podcast. Simply Safe is incredibly easy to customize for your home. Just go to simplysafe.com slash footballers. You can get extra sensors. You can get help from the experts. Uh, it'll get to your house in about a week, which means by this time next week, you and your whole family can go to bed knowing your home is being guarded. Uh, Brooks, Judge Giamatti, Sir Drips a lot. Uh, he just had another shipment of, uh, of Fabergé eggs. Fabergé eggs. Diamonds. Of diamonds, fine jewels, right? Uh, and, Some gold bullion, and he's really he's really into uh, uh, crystals. Okay, like energy crystals. Really? Yeah, he's getting new agey. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, because he better protect that be, stuff because he's got it. The man has everything, and so now he's working on transcendence. Uh, but he is always fully protected by his Simply Safe security system. That Brooks, I know you have the staff to do it, but I, I'm pretty sure you put it in yourself. Is that correct? I sure did. Hmm. I that's, was listening to the podcast. That's how easy. Would big dumb Brooks, Rich Brooks, was able to do it. <laughs> why, why, why was he big dumb Brooks? I'm just highlighting big how ri- easy it big is. Rich. Big, <laughs> big Rich Brooks. <laughs> I'm trying to let people know it's real easy to mm-hmm. put it up. Mm-hmm. Go to simplysafecom slash footballers today to customize your system. You're going to get a free security camera. You'll also get a 60-day risk-free trial, so there's nothing to lose. That's simplysafecom slash footballers. BDB. <laughs> <laughs> uh, big dumb brooks all right uh, uh we love you brooks um you're just so darn rich yeah it's, it drives us crazy uh back to <laughs> the, rook, the rookie wide receivers all right talked about devonta smith talked about jamar chase uh you have chase ahead of smith um as you take a sip Man, of water i don't know i'm right i'm right there with you i, like, I one day i'm this yeah it, it, it 
It's kind of like how I feel with you know uh, uh, I mentioned it of uh, Javante Williams and and ETN. Yes, it they're so close to me that it's you're, at this point of the process, it's just splitting hairs to to make a for me to make a, a statement of I've got Chase ahead. They're both great. One could be drafted I- in front of the other. It, it, we'll see what happens. Well, and and the nice thing is I think both of those guys will be put in a position with draft capital and with just what their college pedigree is to where a team can expect them to come in and make a huge impact Absolutely. year one. And that's yes. important for fantasy. Yes. All right, let's talk talk about Jalen Waddle. Ooh, Waddle, Waddle. Out of Alabama. We're just going to ping pong between Alabama and LSU for the we, first four oh names. Oh, my goodness. Terrace is next? Yeah, Terrence, yeah. Terrence Marshall's next. Um, so we'll talk about Jalen Waddle. Explosive. It's completely different player. Yes. Than Devonta Smith. Um, field stretching type of guy. I was very impressed with with where I think he can get to as a player. Um, Part time player in 2019. Lost half of the 2020 season with an ankle fracture. So we have seen less of yes. Jalen Waddle. But what you've seen with you know three different quarterbacks. He had Jalen Hurts. He had Tua. He had uh, good old McCorkle. Oh yeah, McCorkle Jones. Yes. What was your takeaways with Jalen Waddle? Do you believe in him? I do. The uh, you can't data scout Jalen Waddle because of the unfortunate injury. He only played six games, uh, and in in that time, he wasn't you know just taking over the team. But he is great. If you watch, if you watch him, he is so incredibly fast. Uh, he had deep targets. He is he has return skills. His ability to adjust for the ball. And uh, he he's one of the guys that can stop and then immediately be back at full speed. Uh, so in NFL teams will see all of this. Like they're they're not going to look at his production and feel like we can't go in on Waddle. Waddle, I fully expect to be a, a first round wide receiver. I think we're going to have four. A fifth may slip in there. Do you have, do you have a? Uh, I no, mean, we're we're getting ahead of ourselves. You're, you're just talking how many, about how many wide receivers would you put in the first round this year? Four. Four? Yeah. I guess you could have a fifth, but I think four. All right. But I yes. think we were surprised last year how many got in there. I mean, people are yes. looking for weapons. Yeah, but but Waddle is – he's he's incredible. He was well on his way to having a full breakout season with Alabama before the injury. He's Jason's number two. Really? Yes. Oh, uh, well, I guess it, it, well, he has Jamar Chase at, what, like nine or ten? Uh, out, out of his top ten. <laughs> Oh man, he's... <laughs> <laughs> I love that he's not here. <laughs> um, yeah, he said he, you know, better overall wide receiver than Rugs. Rugs obviously went very high due to the speed in the NFL draft. Speed is very, very valuable. Uh, traits that seem unstoppable to him in terms of Waddle, like you said, you can't dat- data scout him, but he is a difference maker on film. Mm-hmm. Um. Are we moving on to Terrace Marshall? Yeah, I think we've we've waddled away. <laughs> All right. At 6'3", 200 pounds, uh, Terrace Marshall Jr. out of LSU, when Jason alluded to his, his thoughts that maybe Chase wasn't even the best player on the team, which... That's wild. I don't, that's that's, that's hey. his opinion. Yep. He has a right to it. And, uh, goodness, scouts are wrong all the time. So, uh, Terrace Marshall, though, I I was super impressed with him. I know he's a player that Kyle uh, Borgignoni, editor in chief, DFS pass extraordinaire, says you know this is the flag. He, he he's planting the flag on Terrace Marshall Jr. Mm-hmm. Loves him. Um, great body control, explosive after the catch. I, he opted out of half of 2020. Played seven games before that. Yeah, this weird. Er, th- this season was very strange. Number one, we had. You know, quite a handful of of high profile players just full on opt out. You know, Jamar Chase, uh, Kenneth Gainwell. You also had these players that once their team was out, then they were like, "Yeah, I'm I'm done. I'm I'm gonna get drafted, so I'm bailing out." Uh, and but on on a per game basis, I mean, he was. Marshall was absolutely destroying this year over a 46% dominator, which is that's the team's receiving yards, his share of the receiving yards and the touchdowns. Uh, He, he, in this draft of this draft year, we have 
so many small, speedy guys. Terrace is one of few wide receivers who can come in or, or who, who are going in. They're big. They like they have a full NFL frame to be uh, an outside wide receiver. Where most of these guys are profiling as inside or or slot guys. I think that's one of the things that I really liked about watching him good, on the field. So. I mean, he also he comes out of the same. You know, he played eighty two percent in the slot where Justin Jefferson was in twenty nineteen. Marshall came and filled that role, dominated at that position. I, I the size it came through on film. Um, I was super impressed. Like if they, mm -hmm. if he lands in the right spot compared to, you know, Chase and Smith, there's no reason he he's good enough to be the best rookie wide receiver. Let's put it that way. I actually I do agree with that, yeah. and he's not going to, uh, in my projection. He's not going to one of the really bad teams. You know, you're <laughs> the prize that you win for being such a good NF or a college player is unfortunately you go to a bad NFL team. Marshall is in that sweet spot of he is a he is pro ready and he could be taken in the twenties. He could be taken by a playoff team and and just in a right in a situation to succeed because the team is already good and they just need a wide a, an outside wide receiver. So if he goes between twenty and thirty two, for example, you could have some destinations like the Colts. That, okay. He could go to Jacksonville. If they were going to move on from DJ Chark, they might need a guy. He could go to Baltimore. No, no, yeah. no. Go go to Green Bay. Yeah, I mean that's that would be incredible. But <sighs> I wish you had not spoken that into existence because if, if Miami goes a different direction, he could go to Miami at eighteen. Ba so Baltimore knows they have to draft their wide receivers, and they will. And it, and, and and we'll that would be sad. We'll pray for them. <laughs> All right, Mike. I know you like this next guy. Yes. Um, by the way, was that Marshall's forty time? Four point three eight. Goodness gracious! He's, even even in this pro day, uh, yeah, stopwatch yeah. time. I don't care if yeah. that's a four point four three. That's still pretty, pretty spicy. Sure. Breakaway speed. Uh, Rashad Bateman, out of Minnesota. Another guy that shows out well on film. Sure handed. Great after the catch. Great route runner. Not an elite speed guy, but I don't care. Seems pretty good, <laughs> right? And what's what's tough here for Bateman? I I was very impressed by his, his tape as as well. Uh, you'll if you log into the uh, the Dynasty Pass or the Dynasty Pants, whichever one you go to, Bateman is in listed in the rookie fallers because he was listed at six two two hundred and ten pounds. Yeah. Now, we all like to fudge the numbers, fellas. We like to be just a little bit taller. Yeah. Then uh, you're like, maybe you're 5'11". Jason's been saying he's six foot for a long exactly. time. Exactly. If you're 5'11", you're, 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 going, you're going up to six. Yeah. Well, he went up to 6'2", 210. And then on his pro day, he shrank to be six foot flat. And he lost twenty pounds. That is a humongous difference. That's not like six foot one ninety instead of six two two ten. That's you. You didn't just put a couple stones in your pockets when you were weighing in. Like, that's a really large difference. Yeah, you'd be a big liar. That, Someone's a big liar. And Jason, point, but he was still awesome. So you know, Jason pointed out his twenty twenty tape wasn't as good as his twenty nineteen tape, and he doesn't know what to do with that. Um, good size, good production, good breakout age. But, again, he's another one of those players. This could be a second-round wide receiver. Uh, could be a late first if if more wide receivers go off the board. Um, overall, were you Over, overall excited my, with him? Yeah, I, my quick notes on, on him were you could tell he's he is very strong. We'll see if he's 190 pounds or 210. Uh, he, he's got enough speed, and his body control was, was uh, excellent for going up and, you know, when the when a target is slightly off and you have to contort and, and snatch it out of the air, I thought he had that down. So I am excited for Bateman. All right, somebody who is certainly not going to weigh in at 210 pounds. We'll go on to Rondale Moore. 5'9", 180. Explosive player. We've actually brought him up on the show before. Yeah. Uh, the uh, lightning in a bottle analogy makes sense here. Watching him play, amazing. Ran a 4'2", 8". Goodness gracious. But 
what is he at the next level? The amount of production that we have on Rondale Moore the last couple of years in college, I mean, he played four games in three games. He did, Yeah, he, he kept getting hurt. The So you have to rely mostly – I mean, there, there's enough to watch, but he dominated as a true freshman. Here's the reason why Rondale is so – Make the case for Rondale Moore. The, the, the case for Rondale Moore is he's at Purdue. He is a true freshman, and so this is back in 2018. But as a true freshman – he carried a 37% dominator rate, meaning he had 37% of the team's receiving yards and, and teams receiving touchdowns as a true freshman out there playing guys who are in their young 20s. And he, and he's still – he is still a very young – As an 18-year-old, right? So, yeah, 18.2 was his breakout age, which is – that is so absurd. Uh, so that that's it. But but he is, un, he is extremely undersized. He will be have to he will have to be schemed and in in the right fit, and on top of that, then he just kept getting hurt. So there there are a lot of red flags here for for NFL teams, but there's such incredible upside and ceiling for Rondell Moore that someone will take the chance and they'll take the chance earlier than later. And I think the point I'll just repeat it that I made on Moore is where does he go, mm -hmm. and. Uh, does a team look at him as a jack of all trades, special teamer, make an impact more in the NFL than he does in fantasy, or does he is he handed a bigger role? And the injuries are a concern too, just the um, dealing with them at the next level. All right, let's talk about Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore, five nine, one eighty five. Uh, played behind AJ Brown and DK Metcalf at Ole Miss back in twenty eighteen. Been a slot receiver, ran a four three five on pro day. Um, you know, Jason made the point, another super fast, super tiny wide receiver. I, I thought he played bigger than his size on yeah, film. Okay. I thought that there was some things to compare to, a uh, an Antonio Brown on film. Okay. Um, with Elijah Moore and, uh, very explosive played in the slot. What was your takeaway with, with Moore? Yeah. So my, my quick notes on him were, uh, it's like, he does seem to be open a whole yes. lot. Yes. Uh, and running a lot of slants, which I mean, that's it's the funny knock on Michael Thomas. So, look, if you're an elite <laughs> at running the slant, you're always going to be open. Uh, solid hands, and and not you know the na not name withstanding. I was like, could this be a DJ Moore type of player? I need to see the athletics. That's a good comp because he was tenth in yards run per route, which is very solid, and the athletics came through like he is he is as, as fast as it seemed so Elijah Moore is he's interesting I think that we're after you know Ron Rondale and Elijah they're kind of like that same tier of they're they're definitely not in the top they're in, they're going to be in the day two pick range somewhere I think and Rondale Moore I guess could surprise someone and slip into the the back of the first but this is really where things start to dry up, in my opinion, for, I agree. for these rookie wide receivers. So if you got a, a lot of seconds in your rookie draft, you might want to try and convert those into some first rounders because it's it starts to get really dicey after these guys. And the and, and Elijah and Rondale are already high ceiling, but they're already dicey. Yeah, the, the other names, I mean, we can kind of maybe pick and choose here, but first of all, you've got the the most co complex named family because you're going f from Equinemia St. Brown, Green Bay yes. Packer wide receiver, to his little brother, Amon Ra St. Brown. Yeah, incredible names. And uh, coming out of USC, you've got Seth Williams out of Auburn, uh, Nico Collins out of Michigan, Kadarius Toney out of Florida. Give me a name. It doesn't have to be one of those four. Those are kind of the consensus next four. Right. But is there somebody that you really do like and you want to put out there into the universe here, um, put it on tape? Right. Uh, I mean, you highlighting Seth Williams and Nico Collins just real quick because they actually have size in this draft class that is, that is uh, severely lacking. But the name of, if you have not, heard his name yet or if you haven't been paying attention really yet to to rookies is Jalen Darden and 
<laughs> he plays in North Texas, so smaller school, and he's a, he is a much smaller player as well. But he he attributed seventy five percent of the receiving touchdowns, sixty one percent of the team's receiving yards and receiving touchdowns in the games that he was playing. His production is it 19 touchdowns in 9 it, games. It breaks everything. It yeah, I get it. You're at a smaller school, but still the other teams know that they're going <laughs> to throw it to Jalen Darden <laughs> and they couldn't stop him. Yeah. Yeah, wild, very impressive. Wild stuff there. All right, let's talk about the tight ends. There aren't a lot of them to talk about. Never are. There also isn't a lot of breaking news at the top. Now, I'm not sure if you've heard his name before, but Kyle Pitts seems to be the number one guy off the board. Holy crap, Kyle Pitts this is incredible. Is the hype reaching a level that is just never seen before at the t at the tight end position? Because we, we come on here every year and we say, look, just, just muddle your expectations for rookie tight ends. They It doesn't matter how good they are. They don't come out and make an impact as a rookie. Isn't that the headline message here, or is it all? That is a message okay. that we could be saying, and I usually am saying. Uh, Kyle Pitts, just like we were talking about with Jamar, Kyle Pitts could easily be a, a top five pick overall in the NFL draft. He is a tight end the likes of we just haven't seen in a really long time. I mean, you, Athletically, the closest comp you can give him is, is Vernon Davis. And if you haven't been playing – fantasy long enough to remember who Vernon Davis was athletically unbelievable it was it, it it is Calvin Johnson mold breaking you you are the the test is now named after you right like that's that's how incredible Vernon Davis was and Kyle Pitts is is right there with him he's humongous uh his it's six six two forty six and it's for not those just that being, have not watched him play it's not just being fast he is you could call him a wide receiver. You, you, I think an NFL team could draft him as a wide receiver, but he still it, it, he still can do the things that a tight end can do because he's he's that big. He's not the best blocker, but he's fine. He's he is absolutely good enough. And he's the first tight end in college football history to be a finalist for the Bolitnikoff Award, which is the most outstanding receiver in college football. Precisely, which is I mean that is incredible and then he, he did nothing on pro day other than continue to tell you why he was out of the ordinary he has the largest wingspan in the history of tight ends so his catch radius is larger than everybody else now jason reminds us first round tight ends have not really worked out for fantasy since 2007 yes. with greg olson yes so, so do you have to wait you draft them and you wait Possibly. I mean, if it, he goes to Cincinnati at five. In in this landscape of tight ends, Kyle Pitts is probably someone I'm gonna I'm willing to take the chance on. the The bigger question, because we're we're in dynasty mode right now in in rookie picks, is at what point in the first round do you take Kyle Pitts? I mean the 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 105, 106 is kind of where mentally I have slotted him because I'm putting the uh, the big three running backs and the top two wide receivers in front of him. But is that right? Is, is that yeah, the right thing to do? Yeah, you could make a do? case to take him even sooner. Is he? Should he be the third pick in your rookie draft? Should he be the second pick? I mean, it's... Maybe. We're, and we're talking single quarterback right Maybe. now. Maybe. I mean, th we know the difference. When you get one of those guys at tight end, if you had the chance to grab a Travis Kelsey... For in a dynasty league, yeah. and get ten years out of it, or even a Rob Gronkowski, or a you know one of those players, you you can't even place a value on that. No, it, especially with just the rarity. So the rarity factor. If you believe that Pitts represents the most can't miss tight end prospect in the history of the NFL draft, then yes, you can make a compelling argument that he belongs. Depending on where the wide receivers go, sure. He could be the number two, right? But he, uh, I'm in. He's he does not disappoint when you when you're watching him. And that's what what is insane about Kyle Pitts. You know, as you already, if you're a, a talent scout or just you're watching for trying to break down film, and you're jumping in now, you have already heard all the hype about Kyle Pitts, 
and then you're going to watch him and go, holy crap. If, what, what, there was, uh, oh, the, from Star Wars, like, uh, 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 The Force Awakens, when, when Ray asks Han Solo, you know, I've heard all the stories. Are, and he's, are they true? And he's like, all of them. <laughs> all of, all the, of it is true. All of the stories you've heard about Kyle Pitts are true. I think that's an appropriate level of Kyle Pitts hype, Brooks. Yes. Did we get there? Yeah, I think Did we reach the it. level that we needed? Yes. All right, let's talk about um, – I think you have him as your number two. He is my number two. He is – He's my number two as well. Okay. Brevin Jordan. Yeah. Uh, out of Miami. 6'3", 245. Um, great after the catch. Great speed. Was a, an impact player for Miami in eight games in 2020. Seven touchdowns. Um, size wise, comps wise, Johnny Smith might be a good one. People would be very excited for Brevin Jordan if Kyle Pitts wasn't in this draft class. I don't think he's a first round talent. I'm just saying that the fantasy community, yeah, would be very excited for Brevin, and that gets diluted through the Kyle Pitts. Where did Ingram lens. go? The twenties, Evan Ingram, uh, in the NFL draft. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think late twenties. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's where I would have maybe seen, like, like you said, it's it could possible. have been the Jordan range, Brevin Jordan range, yeah. second round. He should he should not be overlooked. So, like, if you're not in range for the at all for the Kyle Pitts lottery in the rookie draft, it's all right. Uh, like Brevin Jordan could be a good consolation shot it, it, for all the hype, you know, where we're, that I'm spewing for Kyle Pitts. Players whiff, you know, things just don't work out. So don't freak out that you didn't get Kyle Pitts in your rookie draft, and just grab Brevin Jordan in the second round. And Jason's number two tight end, rookie tight end, is Pat Fryermuth out of uh, Notre Dame. Or was it? Penn. Penn State, sorry. I get those. I, I'm picturing the jerseys in yep. my head, and I'm getting those. Uh, white white helmet, not gold. Um, I, I liked him. I thought he was very solid. Um, I think he will probably go ahead of Brevin Jordan in the NFL drafts, so take that for what you will. I think both Jordan and, and Fryermuth are going to be holds. I mean, that's what tight ends really are in, in rookie drafts. Um, and then if you want to go deeper leagues, you've got the uh, actual reception leader at the tight end position, Hunter Long, that will go later on. And then Kenny Yaboa is kind of a – Your boy, Kenny. Your boy, Kenny. Kenny, your boy. Uh, he's a kind of a late-round athletic freak that could flash. But um, I think you and I both like Jordan as a, a fantasy prospect a little bit more than Fryermuth. Yeah, they, but all three of them are are it, interesting. For for Fryermuth, it was, I mean, he has like he has a bunch of touchdowns, but really most of them are third inside the five, and then they run a play action, and then there there's Pat wide open. I'm not, I got, I'm not going to knock him for succeeding in that role, but I like, uh, you know, in the year, I guess maybe a bad example because they all they all busted, <laughs> well, sort of, but the OJ Howard year. I wanted Evan Ingram. I want the athletic pass catching tight end where I don't uh, I prefer that over the guys who are well they're in cr over Hawkinson. You know the Kyle Rudolph. We we talk yeah, Ralph, Austin uh, Hooper. Yeah, just those er, are good tight Austin ends. Hooper. Those are good tight ends, but we're playing fantasy football, so I want production and this is the the Noah Fant versus TJ Hawkinson and I'll just I, take Kyle Pitts, please. And I would have taken <laughs> I would have taken Fant, yes. Can I get Kyle Pitts? All right. I think that does it for our wide receiver and tight end breakdown. I am excited to let the Foot Clan know that next week, not only do we have our early ranking shows. Oh, my. But we have Juice. Oh, Ky yeah. Kyle Juszczyk coming on the show yeah. next week. And apparently he's been a fan of the show for quite some time. That's what we're hearing. So he's been waiting for this invite. And had I only known earlier, I mean, we would have had him on right after his Super Bowl touchdown in 2019. So the delay, it's worth it. Uh, anticipation building. So we'll have mm -hmm. Kyle Juszczyk on the show next week. Talk to him about San Francisco. Talk to him about Kyle Shanahan. About some players that uh, he thinks might make a difference in fantasy. Because Kyle Juszczyk is a fantasy player. Mm -hmm. um, so that will be a fun discussion. Top 10 running backs next week. And then uh, Jason will be back. And Jay Grizz will be gone. <laughs> That'll do it for today's episode of the show. Thanks to Al Borland and Judge Giamatti for holding it down back there. And uh, thanks for listening, supporting. See you next time. Goodbye. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.